Hey everybody, this is Kodog here, and I know I normally sound a lot more enthusiastic when I start these videos, but I've been having some... It genie problems. <laughs> so how did all this happen? Well, it started when I came up with an idea for a very different kind of unboxing video. Hey everybody, this is Kodak here, and boy have I got something for you today. I think I've done it. I think I have found a genuine bona fide genie bottle. Soon I'll be able to get all of my wildest and most wicked dreams. Let me go get it. Aha. Yes, here it is. And you know what they say, bigger bottle means even bigger wishes. Okay, now I just gotta rub this thing. Oh, I think it's working. I'm Shimmer. I'm Shine. Your genie is the bomb. Awesome, a two for one deal. All right, let's start this off right. I wish for the most amazing toy in the world. Boom, Zara Mix. First wish of the day. Shimmer and Shine, break out the bomb. Wait, that's not... Oh, these are the toys from your show. <laughs> <sighs> Which brings me to where we are now. I guess if I'm going to take care of this, I have to review Nickelodeon's Shimmer and Shine. <laughs> <laughs> Shimmer and Shine is a Nick Jr. show about the eponymous genie duo who live in the magical realm of Zarame Falls. The two of them frequently travel to Earth through the bottle owned by their master, a girl named Leah. Wait a minute. It's a show about a kid who has a pair of magical wish-granting buddies? Have we seen this somewhere before? Timmy is an average kid. Yeah. But aside from the fact that the two shows are by the same network, there are a couple of important differences that set them apart. First of all, rather than the strange and often changing rules of Fairly Odd Parents, Leah has a hard limit of three wishes per day. Yeah, three per day. Although, I mean, if she only had three wishes, period, then it wouldn't be a very long show, and yes, wishes made by accident do count. I wish we could just speed this up. Boom! Zara Mix! Third wish of the day! Wait, that's my last wish! Shimmer and shine, speed this up to the... Secondly, the relationship between Timmy and his fairies and Leah and her two genies is practically inverted. While Cosmo and Wanda sort of did fill in the parents' part of their godparents' name in a way that Timmy's own parents didn't, Shimmer and Shine are instead genies in training, which is probably why they were assigned to someone as patient and forgiving as Leah. Everything we do is together! 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 together. together. Yeah, they mess up a lot. They also have a friend named Zack. Now, Zack isn't aware that Leah has a pair of genies, but he does have kind of an interesting catchphrase. I think I just wrestled a monkey over strawberry. Eh, it happens. Happens a lot. Yeah, it's kind of weird that the show has one of its major characters say things that are pretty much blatantly untrue, but it ties into one of the show's central themes. You see, in any given episode of Shimmer and Shine, Leah's first or second wish usually causes a problem that, whether by accident or due to a bad call, doesn't get fixed by the time Leah runs out of daily wishes. This can range from wrecking a treehouse to summoning a real live fire-breathing dragon. As a result, they have to solve the problem not with magic, but through their own ingenuity. This is the central idea of Shimmer and Shine, which they deliver rather clumsily through a song they sing in every episode. When we make a big mistake, yeah, that might be taking it a bit far. I mean, I don't know if you'd want to celebrate every mistake you make. Hey guys, turns out this was a terrible idea for a movie. Yay! But let's not miss the show's intended message. Shimmer and Shine is all about how you handle a mistake. The moral of the show is that you shouldn't dwell on your mistakes and instead focus on finding a solution. We fixed our mistakes and the day turned out great. Wonderful. Perfect. Fantastic message to teach to children. Mr. Rogers would be proud. This also applies to Zack's catchphrase. It happens. Happens a lot. Zack isn't lying to be dishonest or mean. He's letting the situation roll off of his back and is refusing to let it get to him. In today's highly toxic atmosphere, learning such patience is a really important skill. I really, really like the first season of Shimmer and Shine because of its overarching theme of problem management in both the emotional and the literal sense. I also have a bit of a weak spot for that sort of Aaron E. Surance look when the effort is made to make it look good, in this case resembling the pages of a storybook. But this style didn't last forever, and we saw a pretty stark transition in the second season.
In the second season, which is rendered in 3D, Zack and Leah find themselves on the other side of the Vale, having entered Shimmer and Shine's homeland of Zarame Falls. Zarame Falls, it turns out, is under threat from a woman named Zeta, an ex-genie turned sorceress who sought out her own magical ability because the problem with genie wish magic is, as Dr. Facilier puts it, Can't conjure a thing for myself. This season is spent exploring the genie world of Zarame Falls with Leah, in disguise, helping Shimmer and Shine in their trials and tribulations as they strive to become fully-fledged genies. There were a lot of changes in the transition to 3D, and sadly I feel like it might have traded in one of its greatest strengths, that being the theme of dealing with mistakes. Now, don't get me wrong, it does get kind of boring when a show has the same moral for 20 plus episodes straight, but the problems that Leah and the genies face now are much more mundane in where they come from and how they are dealt with. The animation swap is actually fairly neutral. While their dropping of the storybook style for 3D makes their show look like every other show on the air, they did add some animators who have a real knack for physical comedy. I mean, how do you mocap somebody freezing into a solid block of ice and then falling over in the funniest way possible? Which brings us to the second season's saving grace, Zeta. Swoop, swoop, tap, tap, tap. <laughs> As far as villains are concerned, Zeta is among the most unique I've seen in a while. While she is selfish and rude, she's not exactly mean per se. You can tell this from how she treats her requisite bumbling minion, a baby dragon named Nazbu. Tie you up. Digu, digu, digu. They are adorable together. That and Zeta isn't really seen as much of a threat, which I guess makes sense since she is always being defeated by a pair of young genies. She is such a minor cause for alarm that people don't bat an eye when she goes out in public. I mean, there was this one time where she nearly took over the world, which is frankly one of the most amazing moments in all of television, but for the most part, she's just trying to find what little advantage she can. Zeta is so unique as far as villains are concerned that she nearly makes up for the loss of the show's central message. It's kind of weird that a show's two seasons are strong for completely different reasons. That and the recent changeover was clearly intended to make this series a whole lot more toyetic. Well, I guess there's no avoiding it any longer. Let's take a look at the Shimmer and Shine toys. I think one of the big reasons that the show has moved to Zarame Falls is that the first lineup of toys released last year centered only on the two genies themselves and didn't have many opportunities to expand. With season two came the Teeny Genies. Introduced this year, the Teeny Genies are a line of collectibles, and Mattel sent me a preview of both the series two genies and one of the playsets, the Magic Carpet Adventure. Along with the main characters, there's also a random assortment of other genies which can be used to populate the various settings of Zarame Falls. As a collectibles line goes, it sort of straddles the line between good and bad. First of all, the sets are incredibly large at over 130 per set, molds are clearly recycled, and the packaging for the individual ones are a tad on the bulky side. However, they do a lot of important things right. The main characters are all incredibly easy to find. Shimmer, Shine, and Leah make up 30% of every set, and many of the 3-packs and 10-packs include all three of those characters if those are all you want. Supporting characters such as Zack, Princess Samira, Zeta, and their pets are a bit harder to find, but are still in the 5-10% to range. And despite the size of the sets, a rarity system appears to be non-existent. That and the nature of the hard packaging, that being a genie bottle on a carabiner, opens up an interesting possibility. You could say that if you only ever buy one of these, that the character inside is your one and only personal genie, which works especially well if you don't get one of the main characters. Also, kudos to the folks at Fisher Price who made my press box. These guys always do such exemplary work and always deserve a shout out. This box is admittedly a bit simpler than most, being sort of a board game with a spread of genies inside, but the back has a one-to-one -one checklist that I can plunk my genies onto and came with 24 genies, which was all I needed to populate the other thing they sent me, the Magic Carpet Adventure playset. The Magic Carpet Adventure set is, like the ones for Shopkins, as much a display piece as they are a playset. The set is covered in little pegs that can be populated by the Teeny Genies. It includes a palace, a spire, some tree houses, and a few play rides such as a swing, a seesaw, and a spinner. But the stars of this show are the Magic Carpets, which run down a pink track through the clouds. After sticking a character on top of the carpet, such as the special Shimmer and Shine who come with this set, they can be sent down the track and wind up in one of two places, either a small sled that goes up and over into another landing spot, or around into a little splash pool next to the spire. But according to the box, these magic carpets are supposed to float like magic. Well, Pennywise, do they float? Oh, yes. They float. 
Indeed they do. On part of the track, there is a wider portion with a cloud barrier on each side where the carpets do, indeed, levitate in thin air. They were even nice enough to put a couple dips in the track so that you can suspend the magic carpets in place. It's the little things that really help a product come together, and this was a very considerate piece of toy design. Better than Sea Patrol, anyway, which I think I'll talk about some other time. I mean, yeah, how the gimmick works is pretty obvious, but it's nice to see how well it was executed here. Yeah, I know, this has been a pretty standard review so far. I wish I could be more energetic, but... Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no!